Nos have it. So the nose have it. So the nose have it. So the nose have it. The list showing how honorable. Four proposals all turned down. But some of the so-called indicative votes were quite close. One authored by Conservative MP Kenneth Clark called for a withdrawal agreement to include a permanent customs union with the EU. It failed by just three votes. A proposal from the Labour MP Peter Kyle called for a confirmatory public vote, a second referendum to approve May's Brexit deal before it is ratified by Parliament. It failed by 12 votes. Everything. And Conservative MP Nick Bowles proposed a soft Brexit deal that would keep Britain in the EU single market. It failed by 21 votes, after which a dejected Bowles threw in the towel. I accept I have failed. I have failed chiefly because my party refuses to compromise. I regret, therefore, to announce that I can no longer sit for this party. Oh, Nick. Nick, don't go. Come on. Honourable gentleman, he's told the House. Parliament is now expected to hold another series of indicative votes. That could be followed by yet another vote on Theresa May's Brexit deal, which Parliament has rejected three times already. But time is running out. In Brussels, the head of the European Parliament's Brexit Committee, Guy Verhofstadt, tweeted that Monday's votes left a hard Brexit nearly inevitable and warned that the UK has a last chance to break the deadlock or face the abyss. Well, just how close are things right now? Our correspondent, Charlotte Potts, joins us from London. Good morning, Charlotte. Uh, Parliament has now rejected all the alternatives to Theresa May's plan twice. Um, uh, what do you think? Are they going to try again later this week? Is there a chance for an agreement then? Well, to be fair, I mean, Parliament has only tried twice to find a majority. So um, for that, it went pretty well. The customs union proposal only came three votes short. So they are going to try to do this later again the week, this week and then find those three votes to then finally get a majority. But we have to ask ourselves what is going to happen then. So if Parliament finds a majority, for example, on that customs union proposal, Theresa May as the prime minister would have to sign off on that. And the question is, is she really going to do that? She has drawn red lines in the past. She has said she's not going to uh, have the UK remain in a customs union. So for her, it is a red line. And the question is, is she going to see that through as prime minister? So then again, we're at a political impasse between the government and parliament. And the question is just how that will turn out. So frustrations here in London are really running high. There is this collective sense of exasperation. And we've heard for for example, very indicative yesterday, one of the Tory members of parliament quitting his party because he's just had enough of it. OK, now, now to try to end this impasse, Theresa May is meeting today with her cabinet. They've scheduled five hours, a long session. Uh, what are the options right now? So the cabinet is meeting today. We have to remember that the cabinet also is very split internally on their opinions on how to move forward. Some want a softer Brexit, some want a harder Brexit, some want to even leave without a deal on April 12th. Uh, so cabinet itself is very split. Cabinet is meeting today without civil servants, which some say is indicative that they are going to discuss uh, the possibility of general elections, something that the Tory party is not really on board with, but Labour is pushing for that option just to change that parliamentary arithmetic and to find a way forward out of this political deadlock situation. And another thing they are going to discuss for sure today is just the possibility of a no-deal Brexit. Some of her Tory party, some hardliners of May's Tory party have been pushing for that. They want uh, the UK to leave without a deal on April 12th. And so they are going to discuss uh, this possibility and see if the UK is just prepared enough for such a scenario. So it's going to be a long morning for Theresa May and her cabinet, and we'll learn later today what comes out of that. Uh, the possibility of, of a no-deal Brexit was taken up in Brussels. The prominent EU politician, uh, Guy Verhofstadt, said it is almost inevitable.
Is that the sense you're getting today in London? Well, a majority of Parliament really does not want that. Members of Parliament have said they don't want to leave without a deal. But we have to remember it's the default option. If nothing else happened, if the UK doesn't find a path forward, if there is no alternative, then the UK will leave without a deal on April 12th. And again, uh, some members of Parliament, over 100 or so, have been pushing for that because they say it's not going to be as chaotic after all. It's going to be fine. We can leave without a deal. And then and we finally have gotten over it. Uh, Charlotte Potts for us uh, in London. We'll know more uh, from that location later today about this five-hour cabinet meeting. Charlotte, for now, thanks very much.